Well, this uh, is the title, and these works uh, have been uh, just partially completed on the 25th of September this year. And uh, I will drive to make an effort to see how the solution of this problem, which we are finding, are based on some key idea that were uh, done in Princeton uh, many years ago. And uh, I would like just to, to do, how can I go on here? When we speak about black holes, and this GRB, both these GRB are indeed black holes emitting JEV, MEV, TEV radiation. And the key idea, of course, the starting work was uh, of Roy Kerr the <coughs> with the Kerr solution. And the beauty of some of these uh, papers is that they are all short. The paper of Kerr was just one page. And following the work of Kerr, there were uh, two contributions which uh, were very important, especially the one of Brandon Carter, which is reported in the exercise of Landau Lifchitz. And then an exercise that we did with Wheeler about uh, an effective potential derivation of geodesics around the Kerr field, which again <coughs> you can find in uh, Landau Lifchitz. And uh, there is where the pro the, we propose the idea of the last stable orbit, which later on became very popular. Just uh, in parallel to our work in Princeton, there was Frank Zerilli working on the Reggie Wheeler uh, uh, emission of gravitational wave of an infalling particle in a Schwarzschild black hole. This you are all well known. Therefore, I could forget to give details. Everybody here is more than expert. And uh, uh, however, there was still in Princeton in, in those days the arrival of uh, incredible person introduced by Papa Petro, 16 year old, which all of you know the fantastic history of Dimitris Christodoulou. Came at 16, I, uh, 17 finished undergraduate, 18, I gave him the problem of integrating an equation of the reversible transformation around the Kerr black hole. Dimitrios did this paper, this result, this diagram, introducing the reversible transformation and the irreducible mass, which we call together irreducible. <laughs> and, uh, and this is a fantastic paper short. Still in the same paper, we uh, inserted with Wheeler the first example of uh, a Penrose process to show that it was very difficult to be achieved. Later on, Penrose agreed on that. And this was uh, 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 the, just following that paper with Wheeler, we made 50 years ago this year, this paper about uh, introducing the black hole. But even more important, a few months later, we introduce in the solution of the, uh, uh, of the uh, 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 reversible transformation and therefore of the mass formula of black holes, the charge. And this was the beginning of a set of papers, which just not to forget them, I have just uh, indicated indicated here, uh, we, in which the role uh, of Nathalie, of Thibault, and uh, also of Jim Wilson at Livermore, in those days we were traveling back and forth between, <laughs> between Princeton and Stanford, and collaborating with, with Wilson, and, 
And uh, this uh, very interesting, well, this is the mass formula, everybody knows. This is uh, 717, the first one, and then first, second, and then uh, four days apart, the result of walking. Like Dimitrius used to say, after. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's go back. We were speaking about uh, the year 71. And in 73, at, in California, we made the first big meeting announcing the GRB. And we start to work immediately on this topic, first with Natalie and uh, in Princeton, trying to find a way to use the, the, the mass formula of the black holes. And Natalie told me, oh, but this problem is very difficult. In fact, we are still fighting on this work. She said, but next year, a brilliant uh, student of Ecole Normale, Thibaut Amour, will join us. Indeed, uh, this was true. And with uh, Thibaut, we just made an answer. Let us assume that we have a kernium and black hole with mass, angular momentum, irreducible mass and charge. And in this paper with Thibault, something fantastically important to me and to everybody working, uh, to somebody working in the field, was that uh, it was clear that a model based on Kern-Newman could guarantee an energy of 10 to the 45 erg, therefore extractable, Therefore, that this GRB had to be necessarily extragalactic, but not only. We put the basis for explaining with the electrodynamical process the ultra high energy cosmic ray and especially the problem of vacuum polarization. I consider this a fantastic paper. And I believe strongly it was so beautiful I could not why it was not generally accepted. It was not generally accepted because the astrophysics was not yet clear. And especially there was one quantity which we will not able to uh, give reason, the charge. Of course, the charge was essential for the vacuum polarization and to have the mass formula of 10 to the 54. And this problem of the charge the, 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 it took uh, to 96, more than 20 years, experimentally, observationally with Beppo Sachs, to indeed confirm that the GRB were the, the, with the energy that we, um, we introduced with, uh, with Thibault. And uh, in, parallel, uh, to, in parallel to this, while we were there at uh, Stanford and Princeton, I kept working with Jim Wilson, who was working at Livermore, and we did a, a next very fundamental paper, which today we are using in the GRB, the, the fact that if you have an electron-positron plasma in a charged black hole, and the charge is necessary in order to polarize the vacuum, then the electron-positron plasma and baryon self-accelerate and you can have Lorentz gamma factor of 100,000. And therefore, we localize even the mechanism to accelerate the GRB. These were exceptional, exciting time. And this picture in the Vallée des Merveilles uh, 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 summarizes uh, this uh, 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 the friendship between uh, uh, Thibault, uh, Francis Everett, and I'm very happy that Kramer will come later to show one of the collaboration that we did with Francis later on, and uh, of course the fantastic man who helped us enormously, Jim Wilson. Jim was the father of the majority of the atomic bomb in US. 
And uh, this was the first, the end of the first part of my presentation. My point is that uh, I would like to to go now to the second par part. I just put here a few things because to make sure that I will not forget. The situation changed in the last 10 years after my 70 year uh, reaching and this is the best example I can give you. Don't worry about 70 years old. <laughs> the most interesting part comes later because you have, you have the possibility to think it over and uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to summarize some of the key points that were not done before. And the new era started really with the launch of not only Beppo Sachs, the, most, the small Italian Dutch satellite, but with the flotilla of the Fermi satellite, the VLT of uh, Riccardo Giacconi, the Niels Gerl's uh, X-ray telescope, and recently, in the last year, the observation with uh, the major uh, 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 Cherenkov telescope, MAGIC and S. And also, of course, with the Chinese satellite, we are doing observation. Coming back to the discussion of this morning, what is the key new idea? The key new idea is the binary-driven hypernova. We realized that, uh, that, uh, that GRB originate from the same binary X-ray sources which we had studied for uh, 10 years with Riccardo Giacconi. A, a, a following phase in which what happens is that uh, two binary systems, the, the more massive collapse to, uh, uh, to a neutron star, and then the second one itself gravitationally collapses and uh, accretes the material on the second one. Therefore, what we are in presence of is a binary system, a binary system which, uh, like, uh, oh, uh, well, like uh, uh, a binary system in which one system undergoes gravitational collapse and uh, therefore uh, goes supernova. The colors are not really perfect, but uh, the supernova, which uh, when is formed, uh, it uh, it creates a new neutron star, like in every supernova, but the companion, companion to a, the CO star, which gravitationally collapses, there is a, a, co a companion a neutron star binary. And the accretion of the supernova, which is here represented by this one, after 159 seconds of the explosion, and here later on 259, the accretion of the eject of the supernova, both on the new neutron star and on the companion neutron star, accretes. And therefore, the first one gives us, I have no time to prove this, but we have the proof to the X-ray uh, afterglow. The second one is the one which, if, if the system is close enough, give rise to the black hole. Therefore, this is a key fundamental result. But what is absolutely new, which has come out from this GRB, is that we have understood for the first time the inner engine of a GRB. And the inner engine of a GRB is, uh, is here represented by the Papa Petru wall solution. In the Papa Petru wall solution, there is no net charge, but there is uh, an effective charge. An effective charge, the total charge is zero. The system uh, has a uh, uh, quadrupole structure. Therefore, uh, uh, plus, uh, si uh, plus sign 
in the North Pole and the South Pole, minus sign in the equator, total charge of the system is zero, you have quadrupolar distribution, and in, in the cup here, in this cup, there is an effective charge which is given by GC cube for the units, J, the angular momentum of the Kerr solution, and B0, the magnetic field which was initially so stored in, com in the companion in the companion binary, uh, binary system. This is the new machine. And uh, we have been able to, uh, uh, to study this in a set of papers, which uh, have appeared in the meantime. And we are also publishing some additional paper with um, Roy Kerr about the detail of the electrodynamical structure of this uh, field. But what is the result? Of course, we have done all the, all the mathematics uh, of the, around the world perpetual solution, and there are many, many papers which we have written on this. And as you will see, it looks like the electromagnetic field of uh, a Kern-Newman, but instead of having the charge, it has the product of the J and uh, J, the angular momentum, and the magnetic field B0. The origin of this magnetic field is a fantastic machine, <laughs> electrodynamical machine. The origin of the magnetic field B0 is just that it was sitting there in the original companion neutron star. And by accretion, you cannot destroy that magnetic field because the accretion in the equator can modify the field. But along the magnetic field line, it just uh, 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 propagates without any, any major problem. Therefore, this is the, the so-called world solution. There are many anecdotes about the world and um, and uh, how this uh, equation is still not uh, understood in general, but uh, we have found a way to understand by applying the, to the GRB. Uh, what can we explain with this uh, world solution applied to 1901-14C? Well, what is very... <laughs> What is very important, yes, what is very important that here you have the Jeb emission, luminosity of the order of 10 to the 53, and here you have the Tev radiation recently observed. And we can explain all the detail of the luminosity by the emission which occurs along, along the polar axis of the, of the world solution. The luminosity here is given uh, uh, in uh, 10 to the 53 erg. And uh, what Thibault was asking this morning is after uh, how many seconds of the accretion you uh, form the black hole? The black hole you form right away of the order of 1.95 second of accretion is sufficient to start the machine going and to see the GRB emission coming up. We are speaking, it's a new science because you, you, you see the data, you have to fit them, the spectrum, everything, and to see the, the properties out of the whole solution. And of course, to derive the mass, the spin of, of the, the mass, the spin of the black hole as a function of the, uh, of the luminosity. From the luminosity, you can find how the, the change of luminosity, how the energy of rotation of the Kerr black hole has been extracted to explain 
this uh, extra Ejeva tradition. But the same machine works as well, not only for the Jeva radiation, which is here in red, in another source, the other one in my, uh, of the title, it explains as well the X-ray emission observed by, uh, by uh, Swift and all the light curve, the formation, the moment of formation of the, of the, of the new neutron star and the luminosity as a function of time. And uh, here, you, are, you can explain, we can explain as well not only the X-ray emission, but uh, also the Tev radiation observed in this case. In the latest days, we have been improving, improving tremendously our model because we can, initially, we had just uh, a few optical data, the one in green on, and uh, in black, all the X-ray data with the slope. But uh, in the last days, we have been able to make a much more sophisticated description fitting not only the X-ray, but also the optical and the radio data. And this uh, fits uniquely the, the quantity of the synchrotron radiation, which is uh, emitted by the accretion on the new neutron star, magnetic field and all this. It's fantastically accurate model. Let me show you Another example, this is 1901-14C, again an, a big change during last weeks. Here on the left we had the original Jev radiation in red, but here we have added in the recent days the synchrotron radiation due to the new neutron star accreting in a range between 10, 100 and 10 to the 7 second. We have been able to do that on a different exercise. We were playing on a different binary. But uh, this technique is tremendous because uh, the fit in uh, optical, in, in, uh, in radio, optical and X-ray uniquely determine the property of the new neutron star generating the X-ray emission. Now, another point, of course, is that uh, the radiation which comes out from, uh, from this uh, inner engine, the papa petro solution, is characterized the, by the mass, the reducible mass J and B0, but the most novel point is that the radiation does not come out continuously, but it comes out in discrete system, quantized system of the order of 10 minus 15 seconds. I, how much time I have? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, let's go to the topic of the last days. Can we see this quantization? This is a paper accepted on 25th of August. Just to tell you it exists. Now, the most incredible surprise is we looked not to the previous emission that we had studied, the, the X-ray and the JEV, but we focus our attention on this emission here, which we call the UPA, the Ultra Prompt Extremely Relativistic Emission. What it is, this source, this emission lasts two seconds. Two seconds. How much energy emits? 40% of the entire energy of the GRB is incredibly powerful. But why is so interesting? 
is that it emits in MEV, okay? But you have enough photon to make a statistics more and more accurate. Namely, you make the spectrum first on two seconds, then you make the spectrum on one second, then you take four in 0, 0.25 seconds, and keep going. There are enough photons to make more and more and more detailed spectra. And this process is going on. There is a self-similarity. <laughs> it's new science. And, uh, and uh, well, just to tell you that we did a tremendous amount of work with spectral analysis and luminosity. But it's clear to us and to the paper, the paper that we are witnessing finally in this special em emission the process that we studied with Jim Wilson. Namely, when you have a prompt radiation in GRB, you need to have gamma factor in order to fulfill the condition of transparency. And what happens is that this inner engine works in an overcritical field, works in an overcritical field. And precisely, we use all the work we did uh, with Wilson to compute the transparency, the time, the energy, and the time scale of emission, which finally comes out first time in GRB of the order 10 minus 9 second. It's a new science. A new science. And this emission keeps going on uh, for... Uh, we are, I have been speaking up to now uh, about GRB of 10 solar masses, but uh, can we see an object with changes on time scale of 10 minus 9 second. Yes, we can make the spectra, but can we measure this? Oh, the key point now is that we can indeed apply the same formalism, not to a 10 solar mass black hole in GRB, but we can apply the same formalism to M87, which is a 10 to the 12 solar mass black hole. And in that case, the equations are the same, but the scaling changes. And what it used to be 10 minus 9 second becomes 60 second, which is exactly the time of emission of the blob of M87. Well, this to bring you up to the 25th, uh, <laughs> to the 25th of uh, September. On the 30th of September, I decided to send this recent work to a friend of mine. Questi sono articoli scritti durante la pandemia. P particularly urgent, I need your opinion on this of his rev, which appears to be precisely of your interest with structure which are self-similary and, uh, and power law power the uh, power law le, uh, potenze. And uh, this work has allowed us to make the last step in the understanding of our work of 50 years on the GRB. I will be very grateful for your feedback and I send you my best greetings. On the 4th of October, Giorgio answer, Caro Remo, thank you. <laughs> as soon as I can, I will read. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say what it means. <laughs> this is to show to uh, Thibault that the most important part comes after 70. Because, uh, because uh, you, you, can, you have the time to understand what was not finished and to focus on this using new data. 
because in the meantime, the, <laughs> the, the, the number of satellites has increased tremendously. We could never do this. With Beposax, yes, it took 25 years to prove that the answer we did with Thibault was correct. 25 years. But now, with this uh, observatory, we can find out in a few days if we are not, uh, not, uh, uh, if we are, what we have still to learn and what we have still to, to, uh, to observe and with what accuracy. It's a fantastic, fantastic moment. moment. A truly uh, a new a arena and uh, and uh, and of course just before closing uh, for the people very interested about uh, last stable orbit of course uh, i am in love with the last stable orbit is gone but uh, this science is different gravity has not directly a role apart the coupling of the rotation of the care with the magnetic field. But the entire machine of the papa wall solution is an electrodynamical machine. It works in a plasma very, very low density, 10 minus 14 gram cc. And therefore, this is a, a, new, a new arena in which uh, gravity as such does not play the crucial role that we thought before until, of course, general relativity is absolutely essential uh, in using the Kerr solution and uh, all the electrodynamic associated and all the acceleration and so forth and so forth and so on. But it's a new science. I, my dream is uh, to understand what a GRB this most complex object in the universe, by far, is by far the most complex in the universe. What is good for? It's a fact that the GRB are democratically, cosmologically distributed. Democratically, I mean, their density uh, per megapass and so forth is democratically distributed, homogeneously distributed in space. Therefore, they can reach, but with the enormous energy, they can reach any place in the universe. And I feel very strongly that the old idea of, uh, which I am reading back of some person I could walk in Hamburg many years ago, maybe that um, this uh, X-ray emission, this JEV emission, this TAV emission is essential in creating life in the universe. This is as far as I can dream. What, what is the magnitude of the B field that you need in this process? Um, there are two parts. Uh, I have not the time to go through the details. There are a part in which you have to produce MEV, okay? And to accelerate uh, this MEV to become optically thin. And that part, the field, the, the magnetic field is uh, all, the, 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 the rotation is the same, but the initial magnetic field can be larger and can be overcritical, therefore around 10 to the 14 Gauss, okay? But uh, with the, now, the, let me try to tell the fantastic thing. When you go to the second part, the Jev radiation, the machine is still the same, but it's at 10 to the 10 Gauss, much weaker, and generate Jev. The first one is much more powerful, it's polarizing the vacuum. Okay? But the beauty is you have all this solution. I think this is fantastic. 
You have all the solution, which you, I, I have shown you very quickly. All of them are a solution of the, of the, of the equations. But how you select the one with very short time scale and the one of one second, two seconds, three seconds, they are all equation valid. And the point is there is only one which uh, starts with a low enough magnetic field that at the end of the UPA process, it automatically gives 10 to the 10 Gauss. And that is the only one, and that is the one which determines the time scale. Okay. So for not running too much out of time, we should close now this uh, first part of the afternoon session. And five minutes past four. Yeah, so I'll give you five minutes <laughs> beyond four. Yeah. We should be here again. Michael Kramer is giving his remote talk. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Thank